As our story opens today, former political figure James Colbert is being released from prison. It'll come out slowly, but the short version is an international outfit made an illegal campaign contribution to him. He claimed he didn't even know about it. They claimed he pressured them for it. The court believed the other guys and Colbert spent 14 months in the worst prison in New York. His release is big news, even though his political career is over. Just between us, my sources indicate that you have hopes of getting involved in prison reform. I don't know who you are, and I don't know how you came by that information. I'm Julie Masters. I'm with the Register. Off the record, the answer is yes. But um, prison reform is government-connected. You just finished That's explaining okay. it. That's a special ruling by the Board of Corrections. Well, it's not an easy thing to come by. How do you plan to get it? Delicately. To his surprise, a limousine is picking him up. An old friend of his rented it for the occasion. For he's an innocent fellow, for he's an innocent fellow, for he's an innocent fellow. That's finally, <laughs> finally free. <laughs> yep, Rita is one of his strongest defenders, and we finally get to hear her sing. I'll take more of that any time, but... Pick a better song. <laughs> you didn't think I'd do it, did you? No, I didn't. I sure am glad you did. Last time I heard you sing was in a campaign plane grounded by snow in that little town of state. What Jervis. They're headed to the Bugle building. Colbert wants to talk with Jonah. J.J. reluctantly agreed to see him because Rita can get him to do anything, but no promises about getting involved with him in any way. I'm here because I need your help, Mr. Jameson. I need someone of high stature, of high standing in the community like yourself to intervene with the prison board on my behalf. That's along the same lines as what he said to Julie, and if you live in New York, maybe it makes sense. I'm on the other coast, and I don't follow what he needs from them. If you're in that same boat, all I can tell you is, just go with it. Can you give me one good reason why I should go to bat for you? Hmm? Just give me one good reason. Time and the thousands of discarded men who are running out of it and who are running out of patience as well. The conditions in that prison aren't fit for animals. I've seen zoos with bigger cages. He says, I can make a unique contribution to prison reform because I've been there. I know what needs to be done and why. I want to make a contribution to society. William Smithers started his career on the stage, and in the 50s he made a fairly unspectacular foray into movies. The move to television was a good one for him because he became an incredibly successful character actor with over 400 roles to his credit. He stopped acting in the mid-90s and moved to teaching. At last report, he's 97 and doing okay. Well, I need some time to think it over. That's the best I can offer you right now. If I do agree, the Bugle gets an exclusive and Parker goes along to cover the story. No sooner do they leave J.J.'s office than something huge comes over the teletype. What's going on up there? A prison riot. That's right, state prison. The inmates have taken hostages, they have control of the security office, and they won't negotiate with the superintendent. Well, let's get somebody on it. Parker's still out there, isn't he? So is James Colbert. He thinks he could turn the situation around. The ringleaders are named Kate and McTeague. Colbert knows both of them, and he says he was afraid this was going to happen. Jonah says, why are you so determined to stand up for this convict? He may be a convict to you, but to me he is a dignified human being that gave me a chance once at some self-respect when I really needed it. Mr. Jameson, he gave me my first job, one where I was trusted and given the responsibility I knew I could handle. You know, you get pretty down on yourself when you realize you are nothing more than the corporation's token black. Is that what you think you are here? I would not be here if I thought that. 
She knows Jonah wouldn't care if she's black, white, or sky blue pink. He could not do this job without her. That's why she can barge into his office like this and nobody else can. She has him by the handful of hairs on his head, most of which are over his lip. Here's my agenda for the day. Get busy on it. After you foot through my call to the Board of Corrections. <sighs> we all know Jonah couldn't play something like that straight. The words, okay, you convinced me, aren't in his vocabulary, at least not in that particular combination. He'll find a way to come in the back door. Rita's okay with that as long as the result is the one she wants. Look at that. Look at that set of wheels. Well, it's the guys from the newspaper. They're going to put us in the headlines. That's our ticket out of here. What? I can hotwire that thing in nothing flat. Drive right out the gate. Yeah, and right into six months in a hole and a permanent reservation in this pig pen. Hey, do us all a favor, okay, big time? Forget it, huh? The guy looking at the keys is McTeague. The heavyset guy is Kate. The guy with the big mouth goes by big time. You may have noticed that nobody included him in the list of ringleaders. You. You want in. Yeah. You have it. Come on, stand up. What the biggest shield I can find. Come on. Come on. Up against the wall. Hands high. Up. That's because he's not one of the ringleaders. Every such group has a designated idiot. He's ours. McTeague, this is James Colbert. Hey, Colbert. Gets in your blood, huh? What's the matter? Can't stay away? What do you want? Just hear me out. That's all I ask. What for? Why you? Well, you're going to have to talk to somebody eventually, McTeague. I've faced your problems, and I understand them. And you know that I do. But they're not your problems anymore, so what can you do about them? Well, with your cooperation, I can help you get what you want out of this. He has a whole list of conditions, and the warden is fine having the two of them talk without guards or anybody else. Colbert says, I'd like to bring a reporter. His name is Parker. McTeague says, no reporter. You all right? Yes. Yes, I'm fine. I, uh, I was just thinking, um, maybe you shouldn't pressure him right now. Maybe you should start negotiating and bring me in later. I'll, I'll just back out of here for now. He has to change clothes for one thing, plus the way he's walking, I think he needs to pee. Well, it's your point, McTeague. I'm going to see you alone. I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> they have something going here. We know Ramon Birai from several shows we've seen. In particular, he played two different police captains in Kolchak the Night Stalker. If you've ever watched Star Trek Deep Space Nine, you know our other bad guy, Andrew Robinson, just possibly not by sight. I recognize that smile of his, probably because Garrick was always flashing it at Dr. Bashir. Garrick was an excellent character because you never quite knew what he was about. Was he a spy, a basic merchant, a con artist, all of the above, or none of the above? Another big role I remember him from is the Scorpio Killer in Dirty Harry. His crazy cackle as he went for a weapon before Harry shot him is permanently burned into my memory. That's how convincing he was. He's still with us, though he's retired from acting. Big Time has gotten into the car, and they've reached the gates. <laughs> One of the very rare times we've seen him do that kind of swing on his web. More, please. That's why Cates and McTeague didn't want to do that. Something always goes wrong, and you end up in trouble big time. Okay, it wasn't that bad. Uh, 
right on. Solid. Real solid, yeah. Well, you pulled it off so far, but we got a long way to go to make this caper work. Don't worry. You guys just stop the riot and make me look like a hero. Whatever they have in the works is bigger than anybody realizes. They all agree that Peter's going to be a problem since Colbert had to agree to let him cover the whole thing. He needs to be eliminated. There's a whole long list of grievances still to be thrashed out, but I've got to tell you, Jim Colbert really handled those inmates during the riot. But after three days of negotiation, all you've accomplished is the concert at the prison. Well, the negotiations on the other things are still underway. Choir, command performance by my administrative assistant. Well, Jim thought that some live entertainment might help to settle things down. So, uh, he asked me to sing. Something about this doesn't track. They have a long list of grievances, and one of those is they want live music? Sure, why not? There have to be some musicians in the house. Find them. Mr. Colbert is going to meet me at my apartment, and we're going to arrange all the coverage. Someone is coming to Peter's apartment, but it's not Jim Colbert. Question, if the wire to the doorknob triggers it, why is it ticking? Answer, to make sure we know it's a bomb because Hollywood doesn't trust us viewers to figure that out on our own. Colbert gets confirmation that the bomb is planted and then calls Peter. Pete, hey, it's Jim Colbert. Oh, hi Jim, I thought you'd be here by now. Yes, I thought so too, but I'm running behind schedule here at the prison. Uh, I think that you're going to have to meet me here. Can you leave now? Yeah, sure, just leave my pass at the gate. It's already done, Pete. Oh, wait a minute. What about Rita? We were supposed to pick her up. That's right. Um, stop there first. Bet. That won't be easy, considering they don't even want him to get out the door. Okay, maybe it did have a timer in addition to the wire. Now the question is, how did the timer know when Peter would be at the door? I told you, I'm a reporter and I've got to get into that concert. Fella, there's no pass here for anybody by the name of Parker. Sorry, but no pass, no play. That means Colbert lied to him. No pass, he picked Rita up himself, put it all together and it spells Colbert is dirty. And Rita is possibly in danger. She's in danger, all right. They're planting a bomb in one of the speakers she's singing through. Okay, now the reason you're here, a talented, beautiful performer. And now, Miss Rita Conway. I'd like to know why somebody didn't help him down to the yard where he could see and hear better. In my reflection, I cannot see what kind of person is inside of me. I'm basically honest and easy to know. It's a nice song, and I still can't decide if she's really playing that guitar. I'd need a chord sheet for the song before I can tell for sure. You know, we better move it, Katesy, because the next loud sound we hear ain't going to be the sound of applause. Those curved things, their purpose will become clear in a moment. I, I am someone that no one else can be. Just like the ocean can never be the sea And the flower Our man with the crutch is badly hurt and the room is on fire. Rita is down on the stage and her guitar is destroyed. I want to give these guys an extra five years just for that. <laughs> It's 
Jim. Talk to me. Are you all right? Oh, wow. Those curved metal things and all the rest? Trying to kill Rita was a diversion so they could do that. They're over the wall and gone. that web rope, he lowers the man down to safety. That's a piece of the bomb. Presumably she'll give it to the police. Rita, I want to talk to you about Colbert. Did he take you to the prison before the concert? Yeah, he picked me up at my place. I was supposed to take you there, remember? He called me at my apartment at the last minute and canceled our meeting. Said he was running way behind schedule or something, I don't know. Anyway, I was supposed to pick you up and we were both supposed to meet him at the prison. So, I opened the door to my apartment to leave and... kaboom. He says, Colbert lied to both of us and somebody tried to kill me. But why? That's what I'd like to ask Mr. Colbert. Now, do you know where I can get in touch with him, where he is, ah, his address? Ah, you're back. Good. You were with Colbert now. Where are the riot pictures? Oh, I didn't get any. Spider-Man saved a man's life, two convicts escaped, and you didn't get any pictures? Escaped? Who escaped? Casey okay, McTeague. I went over the back wall during the commotion. Peter won't think to mention that Colbert didn't leave a pass at the gate for him so he couldn't get in. Rita is having her own issues. They're the ones that Jim negotiated with after the riot, aren't they? Yes, they are, and I have a feeling they got to talking about something other than a new work furlough program. What are you hinting at? I'm not hinting at anything, sir. I am saying that Colbert set this whole thing up so he could bust those two out. He's been... I'm sorry, Rita, but that's the way it is. Colbert was in the big, fat middle of all of it, including setting up the concert. It's not hard to see that he's behind the escape. The question is, what's his next move? He had to have a reason for doing this. Rita is distraught and excuses herself. Peter has an idea what she might be doing, and he has more than a passing hunch she'll end up in trouble. And when she does end up in trouble, he wants to know where she is so he can get her out of it. How did I do? Well, it was better than the last time. Look, but... did I make it or didn't I? Oh, sure, you made it by a mile. Whatever they're doing, he needs to make a jump that reaches to that first line or beyond. When I used to ride a bike, I did a couple of jumps like that. If he can't get any beyonder than that, he could end up doing an evil Knievel. They probably don't want that. Rita just took off in her car. Peter will follow. Hey, Peter, wait! Oh... Not now, I'm sorry. I can't oh, wait. Great. Listen, we did have a date. I was supposed to meet you here. Oh, yeah, that's right. I, I apologize. Something big has just come up. I'll have to make it up to you later. Oh, yeah? Well, not good enough, friend. You're on some kind of a hot lead, right? Back off, would you, Julie? I'm really, really in a hurry. Look, you beat me six ways from Sunday on the Colbert story. Is this connected? I'm not kidding. I'm leaving. And so will Julie. She flags down a cab, and the driver gets to hear those words that every cabbie secretly hopes to hear someday. Follow that car. You know, Julie would make a really good ally. She's smart and resourceful and has a dogged determination. If Peter would treat her like an equal, those things could help a lot. But Peter Parker never was all that great when it comes to other people. Not many people know this, but his middle name is, huh? We gotta try something else. Just like that, we threw out a whole year's planning? Why? Because the cycle won't make the leap. Dirt bikes come in all shapes, sizes, and powers. Get a more powerful one, gentlemen. Duh. 
Colbert says, we'll just have to take our chances. McTeague says, our chances? I'm the one who gets splattered if I miss, not you. There's 50, maybe 100 million bucks in that vault on a top floor. The only other way is the elevator. It needs the manager's palm print to program the elevator to stop at the vault level. If I could get him to do it, I wouldn't need you. You'd still be under the rehabilitative care of the good people of this state. You're going to make that leap. We're going to do it today. You are going to make the leap because he wants money. That's all that matters. Many monies for us. McTeague's point is, if he misses, no monies for us and no McTeague either. But Colbert doesn't care. Right now, he needs to answer the door. Rita. Hello, Jim. Be all right if I came in? I was just getting some papers together. It's just about to leave. I, it'll just be for a minute. I have to talk to you. Come in. If Rita was running on thought instead of emotion, she might think twice about this. Wrote a lot of campaign speeches here, Rita. Wish that's what I was doing now, believe me. What are you doing, Jim? A lot of people are saying things about you. Terrible things. She's here because she doesn't want them to be true. I'm not surprised. That's just one of many attitudes that's going to have to be dealt with and changed. Once a con, always a con. You've heard that before. And I don't want to believe it, Jim, but... I found this in my guitar case. She didn't give it to the police. That was a big mistake. And I know you lied to Peter about picking me up. Yeah, that's right, I did. What? Everything people are telling you is probably true, Rita. She can't wrap her head around this. She wants to know why. I put every cent that I ever earned and all my energy into a political career. Took years of planning and work, constant travel, a couple of hours sleep in airport lounges, night after night, one speech after another, one speech after another, till my throat was raw. And for what? I'm convicted for accepting one campaign contribution I don't even need. I make a minor misstep, and my whole life is blown out of the water. He says they stuck me in that hole, and it's the kind of place that if you're not an animal when you go in, you are by the time you come out. Nobody will put it this way, but his time in prison destroyed his conscience. Jim, I gotta go. Now, Rita, I'm afraid that I can't allow you to do that. I have a gun in the drawer, Rita. I would rather not take it out. Now, cooperate, please. Cooperate. And by that, you mean what? Tie her up in the garage. I'll handle it. Something I've got to finish out there before we go. You better move her car around back so nobody will spot it. Okay, cooperate means let a thug tie you up. And moving her car won't help because Peter has something better than eyesight. And he finally got around to putting a spider symbol on it. Those drawing classes at the university really paid off. What are you doing? Whatever you're doing. You're not going to get rid of me, so why don't you just level? What's here? Don't go away, go all right? Go ahead, go ahead. It's okay. Come on. I don't know what's here. Let's just say I'm playing a hunch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's just say we're both playing your hunch. Peter really doesn't get it, except for the spider powers that she doesn't know about. She's as capable as he is, and if they would work together, it'd be a great thing. But let's be clear. This Peter Parker is a bit of a sexist. He really tries to brush Julie off because she's a girl. He won't admit it, but we can see it. I'll give you some light. Ah! 
On the other hand, he may have some legitimate gripes about her. Now they're all three tied up. They can finger us, you know. Yeah. By the time they get a chance to, we'll be sitting pretty with $100 million where nobody can find us. Oh, yeah, that, that's just great. They'll go off and join some school for the deaf and dumb, right? Huh? Sit down. That's what I told myself just before I was busted the last time. But listen to me. This is not the way to go. There's not going to be any killings. Now get that through your head. Later, when he and Kate's are out of earshot, McTeague says, I don't care. Soon as this job is done, I'm coming back and eliminating those three. I'm sorry, Rita. But don't worry, you won't be hurt. He already hurt her more than any bullet ever could. He needs to shut up and get out of her sight. Here's the invoice. That gets them access to the building's roof. And that's not an air conditioner, it's a motorbike. We finally get to see what it's for. And all three of them forgot about something back at the garage. They forgot there's a nice sharp radial alarm saw right there for the using. We know he's strong enough that he could have just snapped them, but he wanted to make it look good for the audience. How could Colbert get his hands on a hundred million dollars? Did you hear them say anything? No, only what you did when they were in here. Wait a minute. Colbert was on the banking committee. Now they paid him off and fingered him to save their own skins. It was all part of some kind of international foreign exchange currency commission or something like that. Well, what was the name of the company or the bank or what was it, Rita? IFMM, International Financial Monetary Merchants. Their building is right next to the one our bad guys just entered. The two buildings are the same height and IFMM's vault is on the top floor with a hundred million dollars in cash just waiting for them. Yeah. They're in that big security building downtown. Colbert must have figured out some kind of a way to crack their vault. Go ahead, Peter. I'll go with Rita. Yeah, go, Peter. So they tried to pull a fast one and sent Colbert to the slammer to cover their own butts. I say let him have the hundred million. Sounds like they owe him. The bike is warmed up and ready. The side of that container is the ramp, and he's ready to make the jump. said he only made the distance by this much. Either he is really bad at measuring stuff or that bike got a massive adrenaline rush. They toss him a cable, some turnbuckles and such. They put on zip lining gear and make their way over on the cable. Peter is downstairs trying to convince a front desk guy that someone is making a play for their vault. He basically laughs Peter out the door. The vault is on the top floor, and there are a cabillion ways to stop people from even getting to it, much less opening it. They never thought about the roof. Kate's used to be an electronics guy working in the aerospace industry. He got caught stealing boards and components. Now we know what he was doing with them, building that. He has another nifty gadget he invented. What's with the yellow box? That is a computerized ultrasonic sensor. Oh, yeah? Well, what's this supposed to do? That is going to open the safe for us. It's going to do it without setting off any of the alarms that are sensitive to vibrations or to heat. The guy downstairs that Peter talked to was bragging about all the ways the vault could detect someone. As the wise man said, pride goes before a fall.
I really enjoy the direction we've been seeing lately. We had a few shots from up on the wire too. I don't think anybody can fault the quality of the show. McTeague will stand and fight. McTeague will sit and fight. McTeague will lie down and not fight. Spidey trusses him up and turns his attention to the other two. Why? They said it was 18 feet. He can jump that far on one foot. Kate starts shaking the cable. Something I always wondered, even in the comics, was how his webbing knows what shape to take. Get over there and just hold her, Peter. That's what she needs most right now. Well, I think the door is really shut on these guys this time. I have my personal heroes, but I don't have any illusions that they're perfect or even close to it. I don't give my loyalty to anything or anyone but Jesus and my family. I may respect someone to a high degree and consider them an important factor in my life, but loyalty is too much to ask. That was Rita's mistake. She could admire Jim and appreciate what he did for her without putting him on a pedestal and refusing to believe he could do something bad. But she did put him on a pedestal, and that's why it hurts so much. I'm sorry, Rita. I know this was a pretty bitter pill for you. Well, sometimes the medicine does leave a bad taste, but... It does the job. Okay. And we believe her, don't we? She will be, though, because she has a husband, friend like Peter to help her get past it. My idea about these two still stands. When Jonah realized that Julie got the story, even though Peter was standing right there, he called the editor of the register and offered to swap photographers. The man said no. J.J. Reluctant, re, le, le, le. he's a spot, was he? Has got okay. Star Trek Deep Say, Deep Sea, <laughs> yet, oh, <laughs> what he did with her, for her, I don't have his name in here anywhere. 